Hey, it's a girl intro and today we're making a molten chrome custom typeface. This project's inspired by the Dazed Beauty logo. This is my slyly rudimentary process on how I go about making fonts that don't exist. Um, let's begin. So when it comes to custom typefaces, the first step I usually draw it out on paper. I use Pinterest for inspiration for different letter forms and I like to practice each letter until I get them perfectly. And as you can just see here, I'm just drawing out exactly the composition that I want. Uh, next, I just scan my work using the native iPhone app and I email that scan to myself and that's what we're going to be using for this project. Up Illustrator, bring my image into the artboard and make it slightly less opaque. Then with the pen tool, I just go over and trace all my letter forms. The only tip I have for pen tool is if you keep the Bezier handle slightly smaller, it will mean you have more control over where the line goes. If you have any letters that have holes in them, for example, this G or the A, what you want to do is select all the components of that letter, go to Object, Compound Path and hit Make. That will make a compound path and I'd suggest going through all the letters with holes first, making their little compound paths for them and then selecting everything and going to the fill option down here press that little black square and that will fill in your shapes now you should have a complete typeface slash logo or whatever it is you ended up designing um, we're going to save it as an svg so go to the top file save as svg and that's what we're going to be importing into blender so let's open up blender so open up your blender scene and delete that cube so go to file import svg bring in my svg now it's probably going to be really small so um, just scale it up a bit press rx90 just to make that facing upwards so the typeface is still made up of its constituent parts so just select all of them and hit ctrl j and that will join it into one single mesh then down here in the object property go into geometry and we're going to extrude it a tiny bit like literally not that much now do you know what 0 0.004 is the sweet spot that's the one that's the one we're going to go to object convert to and then mesh from curve so now we have a mesh object but if you hit tab you'll see that we've got this awful like streaky geometry so what we're going to do is we're going to go to modifiers add modifier and we're going to hit remesh and then it might disappear this bit can be a bit techy um it really depends on what you're using i would say change this voxel size keep making it smaller and smaller until you can pretty much see all the details of your font so if i half this and i do 0 0.05 i can just see a square if i go even lower to 0 0.01 i can see a bit more so i'm just going to keep bringing this lower in increments until I can see most of my shape. So let's try 0 0.005. Okay, it's getting closer. Okay, let's make a 0 0.003. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the modifier. It could take a couple of seconds. Um, and now if you notice they're kind of like pixelated on the edges but if you hit tab and go into edit mode you can see that now those awful geometries have been changed into cubes voxels that's what they want to call it which means we can now sculpt it which is my favorite favorite part so we're going to change our mode up here to sculpt mode and I'm going to select this smoothie one here and depending on your strength I've got 0 0.7 and 50 px but if you smooth it out there you can see it makes a big 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 difference so I'm just going to smooth out all my geometry and make it a bit more bubbly but what I'm also going to do is in areas where the font becomes quite narrow 
I'm going to also make it narrower in the other axis. So I'm going to basically chip away at it. If you can see it's gotten quite narrow there. And I'm going to chip away at it at the other side. And then if you zoom out a bit and make the brush nice and big and kind of just like wobble over the shape, you get a really nice um, variation in the shape of the letter forms. Okay, so I've imported the one that I modelled earlier, and this is what it looks like. But I've just imported the one that I made earlier, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've narrowed down the stems where the text gets thinner, so you get that kind of molten metal um, liquid effect. Um, now let's get into texturing all the fun stuff. I've been really enjoying rendering in Octane recently. It is a pain, it's such a pain, but it's such good results. However, I'm going to render this in Eevee, so open up another window. I know you can go up here to the shading tab, but I don't really like the shading tab, like, I don't need all this stuff here. To switch render modes, we're going to hold down Z and go into rendered, and it's looking pretty dead. And on my other panel, we're going to go to shader editor, um, and up here we're going to go to world. Let's put a world in first. I'm going to use like an ordinary picture of clouds which will be in the description um, so we're going to hit shift A and go to environment texture and uh, to be honest I'm just going to put that in there uh, this is the laziest, laziest setup I'm being honest here hit open uh, clouds Yeet. So now we've got some clouds up in here. I'm going to quickly hit zero on the numpad in that view. Press N to open up this panel and in view, hit camera to view and sort of like create your composition a bit. On this, in this panel, we're going to go to render settings and change that to 1920 by 1920. Cool, we've got that Instagram ratio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, girl. You work it. Uh, and take this off so that I can zoom into that now. Okay, so let's let's texture this. Texture our text. Um, switch out of world view into object view, and so get your text selected. Um, and hit new um, material. We're going to get our wonderful principle BSDF and the materials here are like pretty pretty easy um, I'm going to maybe bring it down to like a pinky I can't make it not pink Bring metallic all the way up to 1 Specular to 0.4 and roughness to 0.1 um, Back in these render settings I'm going to switch on ambient Loom, screen space, yeah, they're the only ones that really matter. And then you get that nice little bloom situation going on. The depth of field focus on our front object, so we've got something going on in the back. Um, and to do so, we hit the camera up here in our collections, go to this camera icon and hit depth of field, open that up, and you can select your front object. So now you can see that the object at the back is a bit more blurry um, if you bring the s-stop low ooh, ooh, that's quite nice anyway if you bring the f-stop just until you can get the front objects in somewhat focus mm, I forgot I was doing some I wanted to do one more thing a bit of compositing do not be afraid Hit F12 and render out what you've got so far. That's literally not even in focus. One more month, please. Uh, that will do. So, sorry, yeah. Hit F12. Once you've rendered out your result, minimize that and go into the compositing tab up here. Hit use nodes and you'll see that your render you just made right there. Bring this out and hit Shift A, search viewer. Get that 
second one and hit shift A again and search glare and pop that in there and we're also going to do that there we go um so if you hit v that zooms you out don't remember how to zoom in i'm gonna go with streaks medium five mix of minus 0 0.9 and i quite like that output so should we animate it go on let's animate it and i mean like a simple lazy animation here up here select that press n on your keyboard hang on object set origin origin to geometry just to put that origin point in the middle and hit i in location and rotation then move one second along which is 24 frames it rotates about the middle point you're going to do a baby rotation hit i when you're hovering over those boxes again okay and then we're going to copy the original keyframe and repaste it got a little bit more <laughs> and that's literally all it is and it should repeat we're going to set our animation to start at zero and at 16 24 frames per second and i'm going to change the output folder make sure you change your output folder every time you render Trust me. Hue, molten cream, okay. And here to just select um, FFM peg video and then go to encoding and go to perceptually lossless. Cause then it just makes the video for you. I'm just gonna let that render out. This is the final animation and it's looking good. I hope you enjoyed this video. All the shaders are very, very simple. So I think we're going to go into more complex shaders in future videos. But in the meantime, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe and always make sure that you cover your webcams.